Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part nine of my Android development tutorial. If you haven't seen the previous parts of this tutorial, mainly six, seven, and eight, you should definitely watch those first, and I provide a link in the upper right-hand corner to watch those videos, because in this tutorial, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to parse XML, much like I did in the last tutorial. However, previously, I showed you the way to parse XML using the DOM, this time I'm going to show you the preferred way to parse XML which is to use XML pool parser and the reason why XML pool parser is recommended is because it is faster uses less memory and hence uses less battery life so I have a lot to do so let's get into it okay so to start off this tutorial I want to cover one thing I didn't cover before and that is how to change your apps manifest file to get permission to be able to access the internet and your manifest file is going to be found in a resources folder and it's going to be called Android Manifest or something like that .xml. Now to get permission to access the internet all you got to do is come into this guy and go uses dash permission and I covered this previously but not in this very specific way and then you're going to say Android permission dot internet and that is all you're gonna need to do and now your application is going to be able to access the internet which is very nice so we saved the manifest file and we don't need that anymore now what we have here in front of us is the previous stock info activity dot java file and what I'm gonna to need to do with this guy is to stop using the DOM way of parsing XML and instead use the XML pool parser way so the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come into this guy and get rid of all the things I don't need and specifically what I am not going to need is going to be this information which is in do in background this whole entire try block this is where we were previously parsing XML the old way. So I'm just going to select all that and delete it. And there we go, right after finally, and it's gone. And in a second, I'm going to show you how to do all the same stuff using XML pool parser. We are still going to need on post execute because that's going to write the information to our GUI, but we're going to do that in a different way. We, however, are not going to need get stock information, and we're also not going to need get text value. So I'm just going to select all that and delete it. Okay, so now we got all that stuff that we no longer need out of the way. Now, whenever I create this guy, I'm going to do it in a really simple way. I'm just going to create an array in this situation, and this array is going to pull all the XML data that we previously were using. And if you don't remember where that came from, remember we were using developer.yahoo.com YQL console to generate all that information. And specifically, we're using Yahoo Finance Quote, this guy over here. And if you don't see it, make sure that you click on Show Community Tables. And then we were going in and grabbing all this stock information for all the different quotes. So let's jump back into the code. So now I'm going to create a string array. And like I said, it's going to hold all of those values. I'm just going to pull in everything just to keep everything nice and simple. And I'm going to call this XML pool parser array. And I'm actually going to set it up by saying average daily volume. And then I'm going to give everything a blank string. Maybe I want to put a zero in there just to show that there's nothing in it. And then I'm going to do this for all of these different guys. Paste that in there and I have a total of 12 of them. And then I'm just gonna simply come in here and based off of this information, see over here on Yahoo, average daily volume, then I'm gonna do change, then days low and so forth and so on and just keep on doing that. So the very next thing we're gonna put inside of here is change. Like I said, this is just a simple way of doing this. Days low, days high, year low, year high, market capitalization, last trade price only days range name symbol volume and then for some reason I still need one of these and then I'm gonna close off the whole initialization of the array and put stock exchange in here last and then I'm actually gonna cut this out of here come down inside of this area here and paste it in right after we define the URL that we want to use so there we go that is gonna hold all of our information that we parse out of that XML page and then I'm also going to throw inside of this an integer and it's just going to help me track the current cell inside of the array that I'm working with. And of course, I'm going to start that out with zero. Okay, so now that I have that set up, I'm going to go inside of on create and then come down here into my async task and specifically into do in background. Then inside of this guy, I'm going to create a new try block. And just like before, the XML pool parser factory is going to provide you with the ability to create pool parsers that are going to parse your XML documents. So not many things are really going to be that different. 
actually it's probably a little bit easier to understand unless you're really used to working with the DOM. So I'm going to come in here XML pull parse factory is equal to XML pull parse factory and go dot new instance and that's going to create that guy for us. Then a little bit of setup here with the factory we're going to say set and then we're going to say namespace aware like that and then inside of that type in true we can pull this up here so we can see it a little bit better. Then we're going to need to get ourselves some methods that are going to be needed to parse our XML documents. And those are going to be in XML pull parser. And I'm just going to call this parser. And to get them, we're going to need to go into our factory and go new pull parser like that. And then we're going to take parser and we're going to say set input new input stream reader. And what the input stream reader is going to do is just going to convert the bytes of data into a stream of characters that we'll be able to look at and analyze. And then we're going to go get URL data. And like I said before, this guy right here, string dot 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 arg zero is exactly the same as just defining a string array. So what we're going to do is get the URL that was passed into this. And that URL was passed into this right here. So we need to get that URL. And to do so, we're going to go args zero and then put a semicolon at the end of that. So now I think it makes sense to create get URL data. So I'm just gonna bounce out of here, scroll this up, and we'll come back to that here in a second. And I'm gonna go public input stream, which is gonna be the return type, get URL data, and it's gonna receive a string that's going to be our URL. Then what we need to do is to list the different exceptions that this guy may throw. Exception, client protocol, exception, and IO exception. And don't worry about memorizing all this information. Actually, if you wouldn't have put that in there, it would have told you to throw this information into a try block and then added those exceptions on there for you. So now what we need to do is because we need to get our URL data is we're gonna need to get access to HTTP resources. And to do that, we're gonna go default HTTP client, and I'm just gonna call it client new. Of course, put an equal sign in there like that. And there we go. Then we're going to need a way to retrieve information from the URL. And HTTP get is going to do that for us. It's equal to new HTTP get. And then we're going to go new URI and throw the URL that was passed over there into it. And then much like we did before, we want to get a response from our client on whether the connection was stable or not. And that's what this guy is going to provide with us. And we're going to go client execute and method. And now that we have all that set up, in this situation, an HTTP entity may be returned. And to get it, we're going to say get entity. And what this guy get entity is going to do is just going to tell the system where the content is coming from. And then we're going to say get content to actually get our content and return it as an input stream. So now that we have that set up, let's just roll back up here inside of the try block. And there is get URL data, of course. Then I'm going to need to create another method inside of this called begin document. And it's going to pass the parser over as well as the first tag in our XML document for processing. And of course, that means we need to create big document. And of course, that means we need to create begin document. And of course, we know that the very first tag inside of here is quote because this is the XML data and that's where that's coming from. So we're going to scroll back down here after get URL data and define that method. And to do so, we're going to go public final void begin document and it's going to get past an XML pool parser and I'm going to call it parser. And it's also going to receive a string, which is going to be the first element name. And just like before, this guy is going to throw potentially XML pool parser exception and an IO exception, potentially. Throw in our curly braces, start making this guy. Then we're going to define an integer inside of this. And this is going to represent the type of tag that we're currently working with, as you're going to see here in a second. And then we're going to go while type is equal to parser next. And what next is going to do is advance to the next element inside of our XML document. And that is either going to be a starting or ending tag or a value or the end of the document. Then we're going to say if it's not equal to parser dot start tag, because remember all we're really interested in is the values and it's also not equal to parser dot end document. Well, in that situation, we're just going to put a semicolon in here because we just want to skip all of those situations. Then after we have that set up, 
and all the codes available in a link underneath the video, of course. We want to throw an error if a start tag isn't found at all. And how we're going to do that is say, if type is not equal to parser dot start tag, we're going to say throw new XML parser, XML pool parser exception. And then we're going to say no start tag found. Now if we get down into this situation, well then we just need to verify that the tag passed in is really the first tag in our XML document. And to do that, we're going to say if parser get name dot equals and then put first element name, which was passed over whenever this method was created, say string first element name. And in the situation in which they don't match, we're going to throw another exception, which is going to be exactly the same thing. Except in this situation, we're going to say something like unexpected start tag found. And then if we wanted to say what that was, we could say parser get name. Then we'll know the proper tag we should be looking for. And then we could say something like expected plus and then put the tag that was sent in here that we were supposedly supposed to find a match for. And there we go. Now that's all set up so we know that that's all working. So then scroll back up inside of here right after we have begin document. Now we can come in here and create another int which is going to represent an event type and go parser get event type. Again it's going to be either a start and end, end a document, da 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 da. And what this is going to do is just save the currently targeted event type which of course is going to start as start of document. Then what we're going to do is go do, create a do while loop inside of this guy and it's going to cycle through the elements in the XML document just as long as we don't come in contact with neither a start nor an end tag. And we're going to create an outside method again that's going to be next element and we're going to pass the parser over in that situation and the while part of this guy just to fill that in before we leave is going to be event type not equal to XML pool parser dot end of document because of course we would want to stop searching for elements if we got to the end of the document. So now let's go and create next element. Again I'm just going to come down here after all this stuff but before on post execute and here I'm just going to go public final void next element of course it's getting an XML pool parser and I'm just going to keep it with the name pool parser or parser and guess what it's going to throw the same errors as this guy up here so I'm just going to grab this save ourselves some time paste that in there then inside of this we're going to go type again it's going to be the type of element and then we're just going to cycle through the elements in the XML document just as long as neither a start or end tag are found just like before I'm going to go type equals parser dot next not equal to parser dot start tag and type not equal to parser dot end document. And again in that situation just throw a semicolon in there because that is just going to cycle through all that data. So then we bounce back up again into do and background. That's where all this is going on. And into our do while loop again. And then if we get here we're going to say that we want to switch to the next element inside of the XML document. And then we want to get the in next event type and to do that we're just going to go parser dot get event type. We then want to check event type to make sure that the value was found between two tags. XML pool parser dot text. We want to make sure that it's actually a text element here and in the situation in which it was we're going to say string and we're going to get the value from that XML node and to do so we're going to go parser dot get text. And there we go. And then just to make everything very, very simple, I'm going to go XML pool parser array. And I'm going to use my parser array incrementer. So where is that at? I'm just going to scroll up here and get it. So I don't spell it incorrectly. Yeah, parser array increment. Say it starts off at zero. Bounce down inside of there. Make sure that we increment it, of course. Otherwise, that'll cause all kinds of problems. And then we're going to be storing in the value section, the array, the name section would be zero. We're storing in the value part of that array. And then we just need to say value from XML. Let's capitalize that. And that is going to store all the values. And everything else here is perfect. Except, of course, we're going to need to put a finally block inside of here. Just going to do that. And rather than trying to guess what all these exceptions are, I'm just going to go over top of it and say add catch clause to surrounding try for that guy. 
And you're going to see there it shows up. And then I'm going to cycle back up and see if I see any more of these red areas. Next element has another one. Add catch clause to surrounding try. Cycle back up inside of here. Do I have any other red elements? Yes. Get URL data has another one. Add catch clause to surrounding try. And I'm actually going to take the catch block out of this guy and put him right there instead. And I'm actually going to create another catch area here. Surprise didn't show up, so I'll just put it in myself. Like I said, don't worry about memorizing all this stuff. And in this situation, we're going to say client protocol exception E and just print the stack trace just to keep everything simple. And I also like it better when these catch blocks are actually apart from each other so they're easily read. And there you go. Now we have everything we need to parse the XML data inside of doing background using XML pool parser. And now the only other thing we're going to need to do is get all that information out of our array. And I'm actually just going to copy this guy right here and then come down into the guy that's going to write our information out to the GUI, which is going to be on post execute. And this is actually going to be pretty easy. I'm just going to come in here where it has name. and I'm going to go XML pool parser array. And if I come inside of here, I can see that 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 index is going to be where our name is. And from now on, I'm going to use all of that information right there. So I'm going to change this guy right here to 9. And that's going to get me my name value. And then I'm going to do that for all the rest. So year low is going to be 4. Year high is going to be 3. Days low is going to be equal to 2. Days high just to check over here as well. Days high is going to be 0, 1, 2, 3. Oop, it's going to be year high, actually. So that's going to be year high is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Year high is going to be 5. Sorry about that. And then days high is going to be 3. I've got that sorted. Last trade price only is going to be equal to 7. Change is going to be equal to a 1. And then finally, days range is going to be equal to 8. And then I'm going to file save that and everything is looking beautiful. So let's execute. And here we are inside of our little stock guy and we're going to hit quote. And there you can see all the prices updated. So that was a really fun tutorial. As this tutorial continues, I'm just going to keep making more and more and more apps. If you have any requests on things you'd like to see, as long as they're reasonable, I'll do my best to make those apps. Please leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.